Hey go. everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today we're going to have a couple interesting challenges. Uh, the first challenge is that one of our cameras died, the Cinnamon Face camera died, and then three of our mics went out. We think there must have been a power surge or something that took out the electronics. So we're literally down to equipment from like 10 years ago. <laughs> we have spares. We're pulling out the we spares. We have spares. Yeah. And just... we're pulling out the spares. Your class is going to be okay because you're going to be able to see the canvas like this. And then we still have the angle camera and we still have the palette cam. Yeah. So you're just going to be missing uh, my delightful face. And that's it. You know, other than that, you're super duper I'm going to work on it while we're doing this. And John's going to work on things as we're going. And I'm going to try to find my live chat so I know what's going on with you guys for as long as all of that's working. Now, today's going to be a really fun day. This is an easier painting. It's got some chill techniques. To make it a lot easier, I'm going to show you uh, the traceable transfer technique again um, for Canvas because I've been getting a lot of questions. I'm going to make another video on it on how to transfer for paper and how to transfer for Canvas, but right now I'll demo today since I had like 10 questions for that. <laughs> so I want to make sure I get that answered. Um, I see uh, text paint by heart and Jane Garrett, Lilabelle, Virgo rules and Deanna and Amy and Shirley. If you have questions, put them all in caps. The moderators will either answer them for you or um, I might answer them live on the show if I see them. I have a couple of things here. I have my traceable printed out and I have my carbon paper transfer and I'll be demoing that today. The reason that I like this for acrylic is because sometimes acrylic doesn't do the pencil rubbing technique. That's the one where you rub the pencil on the back of your traceable, tape it down and transfer it onto your canvas. Once you paint it with acrylic, it's a little plastic and it won't always take the lines. So I like the Cero paper. If you don't have a transfer paper and you have your traceable, you're going to want to take a pencil and scribble all on the back and transfer it on now and you're going to paint carefully around it because it really won't do that uh, for you well once the um, paint is on. And I'll go over that again and again and again, explain that again and again. Um, oh, Robin B is negative for COVID. Woohoo! Free! Uh, you don't need to prep your canvas any differently, Margaret. If you purchase just a regular canvas, they come free gessoed. And honestly, that gesso um, can be helpful if, you, if you're doing just the rubbing method to transfer the image on. Now, ideally, we paint our background in some first, dry it, and transfer it on. But again, if you don't have transfer paper, you're going to use the rubbing technique. If you've not seen those techniques, I'm going to ask that my mods drop in my how to transfer images on a canvas video in the chat. It's real short, and it will explain several methods to get an image on a canvas. All right, this is an 11 by 14, and it's so weird not to be mic'd. I feel like no one can hear me. And, and uh, my sound may be very strange, guys. I've got... Thalo. It's a little echoey, but it's, it's we're, we got you there. This is this is weird. This is early days of YouTube. It is early days of YouTube. Phthalo green, bird sienna, yellow ochre, cad yellow medium, cad red medium, Mars black, ultramarine blue, and titanium white. On this particular painting, if you have a slightly different shade of color than me, I don't think it's going to impact you in too challenging of a way. And I think I'm going to start with an, step a step one in an angle brush today. All right, so we're going to grab an angle brush. You could do a one inch or a half inch. I've got a couple of these. These are three quarter inches, so I split the difference on these just because the other two were sold out. And we're going to, you could use a bright too. Uh, you could use a brush shape like this if you don't have this brush. I just like this shape brush for this style of painting is all. Oh my goodness, John. I, I forgot my water. I left it in the sink. We're having a morning. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to begin by loading up some white paint and a little yellow oxide, a little yellow ochre there. And you'll notice that I'm mixing a very, very light color. And I'm going to begin right here on the surface. And it's going to be so light you barely see it, right? It is beigey. Thank you. Right? It's a little beigey but very, very light, like an off-white, almost an eggshell. And I'm going to want that to be an off-center V. So right here, 
All right, that's where our light values are going to be. And you'll notice that I'm going back and forth in almost a crisscross or hatching motion for this. Loading up a little more white, grabbing a small amount of my yellow ochre as I move out. This, this one goes with the girl walking in the field if you enjoy this particular one. Uh, that one has our good sound system and all of our stuff. Thank you, Heather! Two dollars towards new cameras because that's what we're going to be doing this week is hitting B&H and getting some new equipment because apparently it all just got fried in a storm. But we're really trying to make sure that no matter what, even if there's you know equipment or something going down, that we're getting together as live. Now I'm about here through here on this and you can just see a hint of of stronger color there. I'm going to go ahead and get a little of my yellow ochre and my cad yellow together and make sort of a half tone and grab some white. And you're going to see that now a little bit of yellow is coming into this. And this is sort of like little pops of sunlight. I meant to do the heart emotions, not the poop. Well, I don't know, moderator Quinacridone. The way this day is going, I think poop is sometimes appropriate because the, I mean, three mics are down. Three lavalier mics are down. Uh, my original mic wouldn't go on. We are, I literally have a fuzzy thing hanging over my head, just dangling above me like a cocktail, just swinging down. So you'll notice that this is a little more gold around here, right? It's a little more gold. And then as I'm going to come out, I'm going to wipe off my brush on a paper towel, right? This is going to control my pigment. And I'm going to go a little bit into my uh, ultramarine blue. And you can smidge it with, and smidge is when I notice that I get just the tiniest amount of brown. I found my parts. You found my parts? Give me a minute. I may have a better mic. Okay. So we're going to make a very, very light blue here, mixing this all together. See, we're just mixing it together, creating kind of a very, very light blue. And I might start to come in kind of from the side a little more energetically in these types of brush strokes. I will load up a bead of white that you can see there. And see how by adding that bead of white in and letting it blend on the canvas, we can start to create transitional spaces. It's about weaving, I can tell you that for sure. If I want to come back up into here with a little bit of yellow, see I'm weaving it in. So think of this as a little bit of a very light basket weave. And what's going to make this pop on the canvas is that we're going to have good contrast between our background and our main subject. This is sort of a short downward stroke, still continuing that on. Sometimes we might add more blue. See I'm doing? But I do it in little bits at a time. Right. So this is a darker blue. I'll come through here and I will pop in little bits of a darker blue. So it's a very impressionistic technique, which is going to be super friendly to you. Hmm? No. Are you me? No. Or are you just talking to the camera? No, you're I, I think you're, okay, you're, you're trying to convince the camera to go. At the camera, the uh, mic. Yeah. All right, I'm going to come over here and kind of keeping that same directionality. This implies maybe some wind is going, this directionality. Oh, oh, Patty Hoffman, thank you. Patty is, gave us a generous donation, John, for new cameras and mics. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. You are amazing. Hug my kiddo for me, Miss Patty. Patty in the house, it's a Patty party. I cannot tell you how much Patty helps keep the studio just running. And we're so grateful because weird things happen. Angela Maxwell, thank you so much. Uh, Barbara would like to know what is gesso used for? Gesso is a surface prep, but can't like, so if you had a raw canvas, like a linen or raw cotton canvas, you would treat that canvas with a gesso to prepare, prepare it for paint. Or sometimes on economy canvases or pre-made canvases, 
the gesso on the canvas isn't to your preference and a lot of artists will gesso to give their canvas more tooth and help it be thirstier and take in a little more paint. Some people like it a lot, some people don't like it at all. Very light up here. I want to keep my value of light like a corridor of light. Thank you so much, Angela. It's an Angela party. So gesso is a good thing to have in your world for sure. I'm going to bring this down to at least down in this range, even though I'm coming back with green and that's because I want to weave these areas together because we're basket weaving, my friends. We are basket weaving. Okay, Nadine would like to know, do I trace first or background first? So Nadine, if you have serral paper, right, which is this We do, we do the tracing after the background is in somewhat. But if you don't have that, because of the way acrylic resists graphite, um, you've got to do it first onto the gesso. So if you have transfer paper, you can do it when I do it. If you don't have transfer paper, um, you're going to do it first before you start painting. And I'm making another, I have a video on how to trace and transfer onto canvas, but I'm going to make a short video. I'm going to make one for uh, canvas and then I'm going to make one for paper because it's actually done differently. Um, and so you guys will have like a little one minute explanation of how to get that on there this week. But there's a video right now the mods can drop. And if you've never ever done a transfer, it has several ways to do it. Um, to give you guys lots of options and the mods hopefully can drop it in there. All right, let's keep, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that yellow. Now, as a reminder, that was yellow ochre and cad yellow and a lot of white. So I'm going to come here and we're going to weave that back into our blue. See how we're doing? Even up through there. It's not really making any green. It's just showing us the light. It's giving us that energy. So this is a, uh, very impressionistic background. I'm going to try to unlike me. Oh, what's well, one of these? We'll see. We'll, see. we'll find out. Okay. John is testing another mic on me. So we've been doing this so long. I've been doing this for about 10 years on YouTube. And I think there was a time when all the equipment breaking and all the cameras going out might have like thrown me completely from doing the show. But at this point now we're like, no, we can still do it. You just don't get to enjoy my face, which is okay. Okay. I'll turn my mic on. I'm going to tell, I'm going to just, while she's working there, I'm going to just do this. I'm going to go. You're going to just test it. Pretty sure. If you're doing the Goldilocks painting on a canvas, Margaret, I would use Daniel Smith's watercolor ground two coats on the canvas so you can do the same techniques but with watercolor paper or do it on watercolor paper. Yeah. So just a little yellow there. And then, you know, I can always come back into my blue again, weaving in. It's pretty chill. Let's call that a step. Okay, that's, right? that's a pretty, pretty good step. We've gotten fairly far into that. And we're going to dry that thoroughly. Oh, thoroughly, dry thoroughly it. dry. Is that okay? Yes, it is. All right, now, I'm going to use a hair dryer. Which we will see. Which we will see, in, in, but you won't hear. Okay. Well, I'll mute it there. So, now that I'm back over here, sorry about that, guys. Unexpected hazard of the day. Uh... Not being able to be over here right when I wanted to to help just some of that stuff. But you can see, thoroughly drying uh, makes a big difference when you're going on before you go on to the next layer here. Um, mostly just making sure that uh, uh, you don't pick up any of those, um, the under colors as you're going through here. And I'm just going to make sure I can adjust this just so we can see just the subtlety of those. Because those are very, very light painting there of yellow and blue, so it's real easy to get lost in that. So I'm just wanting to make sure that we've got that totally adjusted so that you guys can see it well on both cameras. Because again, we weren't really expecting the uh, 
the cameras to break. I mean, like, man, so many things just keep going weirdo wonko for us. Yeah. I never, make sure. Now you can hear me on, the, on her overhead. And you hear me on your overhead? I gotta, I gotta be quieter. Okay. It's okay. It's all right. We can just <clears throat> turn me down. Just a it's just a journey, right? It is. <laughs> Thank you so much, Phyllis. Phyllis is also contributing for new cameras and mics. <laughs> I, lightning is not the friend of electronic equipment. I can tell Step you that two. right now. Power surges are not. Now, this is Saral paper. S-A-R-A-L. I have the black here. You're going to want the colored side down. You could probably also use yellow if you have good eyesight or a blue or red on this. It comes in different colors. I have it for sale in my art store. And we have the shipping fixed a lot on the store. So at least it's like $10, but Cyril is something that you can get a lot of places. Um, and so it's a special paper, carbon paper made for acrylic. And I really, really like it. So you put it down first and I'm going to put it down a little bit from the top and I'm going to use a piece of tape. This is a low tack tape. It doesn't tear my paper or my canvas. And I'm going to put it a couple of places. And the reason I do that is I don't want the serial paper to shift or move on me. Right? So that is one of the first tips that I have for you guys that were asking about how do I do this transfer thing? How do I do it? You keep saying it. How do I do it? So this, I'm going to make a special video about this, but just for today, because I know someone who is doing this for a very special reason, and I want to make sure that they can do it. A lovely young person who's wanting to do this as a gift. So that is why we are going through this today. Now I am putting her a little bit lower and what I'll be doing is extending the lines of the swing up. I'm going to tape down my paper twice as well. Then all you do is you're going to take a pen. I am going to use a red Bic ballpoint pen and that's just so I can see where the lines are. And what you do is you press over the lines that you see. And this is going to transfer the drawing to your canvas. Now, if you go, if you don't have the paper, if you do this on a raw canvas and rub the back of the transfer, it will go right on no problem. But that method doesn't work once the canvas is painted very easily. Um, the plastic just tends to resist the pencil and I've got a whole video about that and it's su a super fast video so if you've just never transferred before and you're like wow I don't know how to do that don't worry I got that video for that because I don't expect you to know things right down the arm and you can see that the red does help me know where I've been so I don't leave you know, some of my canvas just undone. Ooh, it wants to lift there. And what you don't want it to do, you don't want either of these papers to move. That's the big trick about doing a transfer. You can do projection, you can do gridding, and you can do transfer, and you can do freehand. We most often do freehand on my channel, but again, there was a young person doing this as a gift, and they really, really wanted help with the transfer technique because it was super important that they, they get this just right because they're making it for a grandma in their life who's not feeling well, and they thought this would cheer her up. And so I said, that'd be no problem. I would do that today. That's the other reason why we're absolutely going live, no matter what. All right, here we go. So you see, just going over that. And then when I lift this up, if this works as it should, what will happen is these lines will all be transferred to the canvas as black carbon lines that will allow me to paint this in easier. Is there a video that explains how to put a three by four sketch onto a larger canvas? Um, there's a big hour long how to transfer an image onto a canvas where we talk about every, every technique, but I, it was done a while ago and I want to redo it, but it will get you through that because it'll go over gridding, projection, all of those things, how to enlarge. Um, I, 
the best math I've ever heard explained was the Stephanie Bergeron explain the math where you, I don't explain the math. There's actually a way to say if it's one inch grids here, then it'll be like a two by two or something on the wall. I just use the calculator and I use, this is gonna sound like I'm saying something uh, inappropriate, but I'm not, it's just the name of the website, Rastorbator, R-A-S-T-O-R-B-A-T-E-R. And it is a great way to do that. Now let's see if we've done a good job. And what I do is I, I check it here and it looks like my image transferred. There will be a little carbon dust off. We have painting to do and everything here anyways, so that's not gonna mess with us. And the way that I clean that up is I'm gonna take like a brush and clean water. Sometimes you can lift it up this way and sometimes you've got to paint it out. Hmm? We're still cleaning up our traceable area. If this won't lift up for you from that, then what you do is you just paint over it. Again, probably why I don't use it necessarily a lot on here. I freehand, but that's how I would get that done. Now let's clean this up so that it's, it's ready for us and you can do a new step. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look for where my carbon paper made a smudge. That's why I like to use the yellow and serial paper. We just can't do it on the show because, well, you can't see it, like, at all. I can't see it hardly at all, but you guys definitely can't see it. But all I do to fix that up is I just come through with some paint. And a little white, and it will go away. I'm using the mix of yellow ochre and cad yellow, and I'm still using my three quarter inch angle brush. Oh, the grid drawing tool. Thank you, moderator rainbow. That is a very good tool. Uh, Jane says, I got some transfer paper off of Temu, but it didn't work well, and I can't decide if it's me or the paper. Yeah, it's definitely the paper, Jane. It's definitely the paper. I um, only get real stubborn in recommending brands, right? Because we don't do a lot of sponsored videos. The reason you hear me like recommending Serral paper, and that is in the link, it, that's in the description below the name of it, and it's on my store, is because the Serral paper works on acrylic. Very few things do. I'm just bringing my light sky down, just making sure I've got a nice weave through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and start weaving back up the garden okay still my angle brush you can use a half inch you can use a one inch or this is the three-quarter catalyst by princeton polytip bristle angle shader that's what this brush is i do have it at my store you can find it online at a bunch of different places i'm never offended when you guys like cross shop or things or anything i think that's great so definitely definitely get one of those if you haven't they're a wonderful brush i'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my phthalo green together. And I'm going to come here to the sides. I'm gonna actually be lightening in here in the center, but my corners are my darkest color. You can paint around the sides of the canvas if you don't want to frame, by the way. If that's something that you, you know, you wouldn't want to frame. And as I'm coming here, you'll notice that I trim this in, the dark value, a little bit. I'm doing that sort of fun hatching that we did earlier. I just want to make sure that I'm a nice dark base for our fall scene. I'm, my kids are back to school for the first time. Uh, this is our first day back. I'm sort of excited for them. They actually got to walk to school, which I'm also really excited that they can walk to school and it's safe for them to walk to school. And they're really, really proud of themselves and just we're thrilled to go. And it's Luna's first year of middle school. And spiders last, so it's big stuff. <laughs> Darcy's like, sure, we can do it. I'm doing it. You know what? No matter what the technical challenge is, I, I just, uh, today's painting had to happen. Um, I'm a big softy, and I got uh, a, a young person writing me asking for help. And I was like, you know what, John, we got to. We got to power through, man. All right. 
So this is the dark green here. Now the trick that I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of wipe off my brush because I don't want to waste the paint. I'm going to grab a bead of yellow. I'm going to come over here and mix that in and I'm going to get a green gold. It's pretty dark at first. There we go. Nice mix in. And you can always add a little more brown if you want to take it into more of a green gold. If you're, uh, if you have the chromium green like Shirley has, you wouldn't necessarily have to mix as much brown to get it to the green gold as I am. All right, but we're gonna, now let's come down and make sure we kind of blend this and mishy mash it. See how I'm kind of turning the brush and making smaller marks up here? That's me kind of giving us like little bits of leaves up into the sky is what we're trying to do. Come across here with the yellow green. And then back into our dark green. Brenda English, any chance for a comeback on the cat's tongue brushes? I'm babying mine trying to make it last. Yes, actually, Brenda, there is a very good chance that my I will have a brush line again in the next year. I'm actually talking uh, to brush maker and uh, sample should be coming to me soon and we'll see what they send. But if it's good, yeah. I think there may be a chance that that will come back because I love those brushes. I love my brushes. And soap. We're talking to our soap company again. They're going to try to remake the batch that they oopsed. So can you see how we've added this lighter green yellow through here? Now I'm going to take this over to my yellow green mixture on the canvas that I had from earlier. I'm adding in white. So this was the yellow ochre cad yellow mixture I had from earlier with white. Now I've added some of my green and white to that so that we can do some little kind of sky blending. And again, see how I turn that brush to make little leaves? Turn the brush. Be playful. You can come in and also kind of half tone with a little ochre there. Look at that. To get a little beigeier color. So I find there's a lot of room to play a lot of wiggle room on this particular process. So this one I added more yellow ochre to it. This one is the yellow ochre cad yellow and our green mixture with white. That's how we're getting there. Maybe a little more yellow. I always think that's sort of fun. I mix back in. So these little these little tones are what make it feel like leaves in the garden. Yeah. That's 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 how we get there. And that's going really well. It's looking super nice. I think I'm gonna get even more yellow right here. Or this little bit below her feet. Where am I living now? Well, right, I wish I could tell you that we were living in Ireland. We're gonna do an update video. It's probably gonna have some title like we failed or something. But really what happened is that our immigration is taking a lot longer than we thought, uh, than our lawyers thought, than anybody thought. And it's, a, it's been a long process. And we ended up settling in Ann Arbor, Michigan. We got an update today, so. The oh, last, the last uh, submission, or the latest submission was put in, and they think it will be okay, and we will get a visa accepted. Oh, wow, that's kind of exciting. Now All that right. we're a million years away. Now we're a million years away. <laughs> oh, of course that goes in. Uh, we'll let you, it, we still have to do it because we have our business. We have some of our business set up over there for the store, so we can uh, eventually get to uh, global shipping. Mm -hmm. And so it's a whole long story, but right now we're in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Can I, I'm going to yeah. try this, John. Okay. So, man, we kind of have some microphones working and some things happening. It's, uh, we'll get there again. I don't, man, this has been a tough move. It's been tough on our equipment, too. Um, we have broadcast from hotels and kitchens and living rooms and dining rooms and basements and bedrooms garages 
just about any place where I could uh, set up a tripod is uh, is where we've, we've broadcast from. And it's been hard on the gear. So uh, now that we're settled, I was really happy. I was like, oh, I got everything going. So I can just walk in and flip it on. I walked in and flipped it on, and I saw this weird green band across the screen. And I was like, man, that's not a good sign. So I went over, I turned the camera off, and turned it back on, and then I just got white out of the output. It was just a you know, solid white screen. So I was like, well, that one's toast. So uh, in the middle of trying to swap that camera out. Uh, <laughs> just losing cameras. Left right. All right, so we, next step, yes? Yes, and Ginger says, not not my mom, Ginger, but Ginger uh, Clearwater says, I live an hour away from AA. So, um, yeah, we're loving Ann Arbor. We love Michigan. We're loving, the kids are loving it. It's, it, it as a as a default that we had to go to when the, when we realized like the Ireland thing was not going to pull together before a school year started. I'm really glad we picked Michigan. Michigan is fantastic. We're loving it so far. All right. I have sized down. So you will notice that this brush and this brush are different sizes. I'm sizing down my angle brush. And this is a, I believe this is technically the half inch size. You can see it's a little bit smaller, but I want to size down and I'm going to grab some of my green, my phthalo blue green shade and my burnt sienna. Do we have a new step up? Uh, okay. And I might even get a little kind of black in here, blue. We're trying to just make a weird dark upper. I'm going to give us a new step because I don't think I did. Okay. Give us a new step. We timestamp these so that you can find your spot again um, on the video and it'll let you, it really does help you find your way through. And let's put a few little bits of this dark green up here, right? Just a little bit to imply a world where that's going on. I can add a little blue into my mix here. And kind of pull some dark blue in if you can see that it really helps create that vignette in the painting it's an angle brush again i am paying attention to my brush directionality for sure and that looks pretty good i'm loving that all right i'm gonna rinse out Ginger, you are not kidding. Ann Arbor is a great place for kids. And then Carly says, congrats. I know how difficult it can be to find a home base. Man, it is really hard these days. So many things to look at and think about is wild. You guys ready to do some flowers and some more layers and all that? I think that'll be fun. Let's, let's deepen up our lower area here with a little bit of our, our green, our Thalo green and burnt sienna because I feel like my corner could be deeper and I want a little more shadow. So sometimes as I'm working, you'll see me go back and put depth back in. One of the big things that's important to keep track of in our acrylic painting is our contrast. You can go down on your brush stroke, you can go up, you can be playful. All you've got to do is just stay calm with yourself and patient with yourself and finish the painting. Every painting that you finish, you are a better painter. That's just the result of painting all the time. I even look back to paintings that I did before I, I did 2,500 paintings on YouTube, and I was like, wow, doing 2,500 paintings on YouTube has made me a better painter. <laughs> so it does make a difference. I'm gonna add a little yellow in here for everybody, even me. Like there's some paintings I look back and I was like, I'm gonna come back and I think redo that. I want some more bright greens because I want this to be a cheerful piece. So I'm putting some more bright greens. That's yellow, cad yellow, that I added into the phthalo green burnt sienna mix to brighten it. And you can see that just does give us another range of wonderful depth for that. Let's call that a step. And before we put our reds in and our flowers in, I'm going to want to dry again because I want my colors to be vibrant. And I'm going to show you two important things. I'm going to show you what it looks like with pro paint and what you have to do if you're painting a more economical paint and you want your colors to pop. So I'm going to show you two ways to do it. All right. 
Try it, and then I'll show you the two ways. Yeah, so sorry for all the weird technical stuff that's happening. We are working on it. I'm, well, I, I certainly am. And after the show today, I will reset again with different and other cameras to see what we can do to make this thing uh, work a little better. Um, I have some ideas, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> Or did you uh, welcome Johannes Villanova I, you in? You know what? I don't even have a screen in front of me that oh, shows okay. anything but technical readouts. <laughs> Johannes just like trying to. Um, yeah. So normally, guys, if this is your first time here, Johannes is here for the first time saying hello to everyone. He's going to paint this for twin granddaughters. And um, normally my face is here, but all the cameras broke right before the show and three of our mics. So we were just like, we we're doing craziness to just keep going. Yeah. I'm now I'm going to show you first if you have economic paint, right? You're not painting golden. You're not painting acrylic. You're you're painting like uh, Windsor Newton or Artist Loft or uh, Liquitex Basics. When you are painting those paints and you have anything that will be yellow, you're going to want to paint the shape white first. So I'm going to show you that technique here. I'm going to make my shape. I'm using my half inch angle, and I'm going to put down a few little brush strokes in relationship to each other. I'll do that again a couple of times so you can see it. I'll do it right here. There's one, two, three. See how that makes a little flower? Now I'm going to allow that to dry completely and then put my yellow over it. So for those of you at home that are, you know, painting from a kit or have ever had trouble with your yellow covering over a darker color because for a lot of paints the yellow won't show over a dark color that's your solve from here on out it, when i have less expensive paints that's always my solve that is a great way to get there it just needs to dry okay so for those of you painting that that's how you will go you'll put in all the flowers white first and then very carefully put the color over them I am painting um, Golden Artist Colors and Acrylic by Sennelier, so I'm going to just get to put my flowers down. And I'm going to start with my reds, I'm going to start with my dark flowers, I'm going to take a little bit of my Cad Red and just, oh my gosh, the smallest amount of Ultramarine Blue. And the reason it's a small amount is that these cancel each other out, they don't actually make purple, they make a dark gray when they're mixed equally. But when you use this to darken the red, it gives you a nice deep red if you don't overpower it. So we're going to do that same set of techniques. I'm using the corner of the brush and I'm just placing down little flower petals. Sometimes I might just do one or two. Just like, it's like a little loose petal has come up. So again, smidge, right? It's so little. It's easy to over darken your red and corrupt your red. So that's why I go in little increments because I don't want to lose all my red. And you're going to just be putting these around. I really want there to be a lot of flowers. I'm going to go just wild with it. And you guys remember, if you're having any trouble with coverage, what's your fix? Paint this to all white first and then put the colors in. See, if that's happening to you, you might be watching the live stream and then come back and paint it after knowing the fix. Right? Carly says it's mercury and, mercury and retrograde. Well, not for nothing, Carly, but for sure, every time mercury is in retrograde, I've noticed the studio breaks. <laughs> so... That doesn't surprise me in any way. Sometimes I make these flowers small and sometimes I make them big. Oh, Moderator Cat Red accidentally got a comment. On occasion, guys, we accidentally delete comments. It is not sometimes we're just trying to thumb it up or interact or do something else and then and then we do that and we always try to tell you, so don't don't ever worry that you did something. Um, mostly YouTube does co content moderation for us anymore. I've got like I don't know, some hate speech and stuff in there. And so I have it set for that. And so basically that's what it moderates out. And the rest of it, you know, 
we're just friends having a good time so we don't worry about that too much I want to really place these around oh I like that that's a nice little you can see it's just already filling up and it's like leaves it's like flowers it's just oh it just is so fall I'm so ready for fall I if you have not looked at the upcoming paintings that are coming up the reference photos we're using we're painting from some really amazing reference photos we are uh, so much fall like so much fall we're gonna have a ton of fall before we even get into the 13 days of Halloween right so for the guys that don't paint Halloween with me you've got fall four months <laughs> and then uh, right after the 13 days we'll get back into fall and then shortly into winter we're almost there I found a camera uh, who and where do we go for live chat after a video? I'm going to say Discord. Doesn't Discord has a fairly engaged chat, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a Discord. Uh, if Jenna Bug is here, Jenna generally is our Discord um, greeter and, and helps us run Discord. So you see the bug? But I, I would suggest Discord. And if you didn't know, we have a Discord. The other thing that we have is a really great Facebook group, and I know that just seems like, no, nothing good is ever on Facebook, but it is. It's a really good group on Facebook. It, like, literally justifies Facebook <laughs> existing. That's how good that group is. You guys are amazing. It is for students uh, to share their artwork, and it's a safe space for you to be a new painter, and I love it so much. Oh, there it is, Monterey Rainbow, link for the Art Shipper Discord. catch back I don't know if you can see yourself on whoa hi me <laughs> it's you're, you're kind of frame cropped a little bit I mean but I'm we're there. here right thank goodness I put makeup on <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> sorry there guys we had just I like a scramble in the background I see you, you can still hear a little bit of my voice coming in on cinnamon's mic we're getting there though but I'll get I'll get the headset fixed again and I'll have I think we've had this camera stuff. since we won next up on YouTube. That's, Actually the one that just from... died. The one that just died was a next up camera. Was it a next up? Yeah. Yeah. There's a thing YouTube did where they, they were like, This YouTuber's gonna be the next big thing and they took a bunch of us to the YouTube studios and trained us to YouTube and I got to be one of those people which was funny and absurd and also wonderful. And uh, part of the prize was like, I think it was a few thousand dollars to go shopping at B&H. Two. Two. <laughs> $2,000. But hey, at the time, at the time that was everything. That, that, would, that allowed me to buy live two equipment. cameras. <laughs> it allowed us to set up our live show, really. Yeah, we, we, that's what we started with. We started with two cameras, and those were those two, one that just passed away. <coughs> Uh, maybe maybe I take that back. Maybe it was five thousand dollars, and they were twenty five hundred dollars a piece. I think that's what it was. Yeah, it was a really cool thing that happened. Yeah, I think that's how. I think that that sounds more correct. Is that those were Bree is here? Hi, Bree. And then Shirley's like, "Is Discord a free site?" Yes. And if you have grandchildren, I promise you, they are all on Discord, and it will. Uh, or children, grandchildren, or children. It will like wild them out. Like whenever teachers or adults get on Discord, the kids are like, oh, they found us. Because, you know, all the kids got off Facebook and they went to other places. Discord is one of them. That is not why we are there. <laughs> but uh, it has definitely <laughs> been a fun side effect when the kids are like, wait, mom, you're going where? I'm like, Discord, want to help? <laughs> all right. Let's call that a step and let's put the next layer of color on. Let's put on some oranges. So now I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red and a little of my cad yellow. I'm going to make an orange. And on some of the flowers I've already put down, I might put down highlights, but I'm going to do this all again with an orange. And here, I'll make this one flower. This is what I mean about you paint over it. See, and if you had orange that wasn't covering, then you would get that bright color. That's how you, like if you're painting with like apple barrel paint, right? That's your workaround. When the apple barrel paint won't do the technique, paint it white first, dry it, paint over it. 
Oh, Deborah, thank you so much. Putting uh, some little leaves out here now, this bright orange. I love cad red and cad yellow. You've been su such a brave sweetheart. I mm -hmm. really appreciate you, hon. This has been a day for you. I'm feeling your pain. I'm going to make sure I have a couple little different oranges. And sometimes I might even grab some just red and I haven't rinsed my brush. And what I mean by that is look at that mess that is my brush. And this is just to create some different dimensionality. You can be a beginner and absolutely do this, right? You can touch a canvas with a brush. You can handle that. You've got that in control. Brie, thank you so much. It's a Brie party. Now I'm all like, thank you. I'm on here, but I'm like, whew, whew. you can see me in profile. There, yeah, see, the, the, yeah, you the little screen up there. And a little, there's a little me. There's a mini me. My goodness, this was just like. Yeah, Deborah, I appreciate it. It's... Now that we're settled, we're just trying to get consistent again. You yeah, know? it's like <laughs> I consistently can fix things when they break. <laughs> but that's our big goal is just to make sure that our live streams are very consistent and we are, you know, not canceling them. And see, I might come in and get more red. And so you can really mix these up once you once you have this sort of going. making myself a few oranges that's what I'm doing over here it's just making sure of different oranges mm -hmm. and this is just sort of that same thing where we're I like doing this type of flower Oh, yay, it worked. Last time I tried Super Chat and it crashed my YouTube for a week. Well, that seems like they've made a mistake somewhere. <laughs> That's not good for business. That is not good. Oh, I'm so sorry. We tend to keep our patronage run from our website and, um, and not Patreon, but on our website. But I also have YouTube because I know sometimes people feel more comfortable with Google, you know. But every once in a while, Google does something like that. And I'm like, well, see. Want me to big flower there? Sometimes I'll do that, making big flowers. Let's get a little bit more red on here. I want to just make sure that I'm filling up the color. Color is a big deal. Now, believe it or not, this white thing that I did here, I'm going to have to do in the next step, even for my own yellows, if I want those yellows to be super bright, even on pro. Right. Sometimes that is just what you got to do. Just trying to make sure I've got a variety of color. Bree says, can I say how much I love your hubby? You absolutely can. I love my hubby too. I'm with you, you, man. I could not do this without him. He just is. I, You know, I always try to tell people, like, he's a very essential part of the show. <laughs> very essential. Thank you. Sometimes I like to grab some just red for my cad red. I mean, I put it out anyways. I might as well use it, right? Sure. Is Discord the same as live chat on YouTube? I think it's a little different. It, Just, no, it's more yeah. like an old message board, isn't it? Yeah. I would think of it as more as an old it, message board. It has that chat feature, but it's not live, live like this. Like, I wish it was. It, well, so, so it does live chat. And it, if you're in a chat room, it's sort of like a bunch of chat rooms. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, and it is not moderated except by the people who own the room. So it's not like it's just a safe place to go running around in because you can fall into all sorts of things out there if you go it's, looking it for it. It can get weird. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, they do have safety mechanisms in place to help protect kids. So those are active things you have to do for yourself. So know that like any other social platform, um, you it, it's all out there for you to find. All right. Now we have to dry this and do the white flower technique I showed all you right. earlier so we can have some bright yellow flowers a bunch of places. All right. So let's dry this thoroughly. Okay. And then when we come back, we're going to add the yellow. That's looking so good. Yeah. So thank you guys for the patience while we're getting all this worked out, figuring it out, uh, slowly getting things to work one at a time. So, yeah, no, I really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's fantastic to see. Oh, thank you guys, all the support out there. Oh, and SCG, thank you so much. I appreciate it. That's really nice of you guys. Um, you know, we're just getting on our feet, getting everything figured out. It'll, uh... We'll eventually get there, you know. But, uh... It's, it's been a journey, for sure. And, but we're super happy to be here. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love everything we're doing. We don't want to do anything else but this. So, uh, it's not like I'm saying I'm complaining about it. I'm just sort of like... Hemming and hawing about all the breaking and things that I got. Oh, you know. thank you so much, SCG. I really appreciate that. All right, I'm going to go back to the white technique we talked about earlier because as we determined, even pro paint, the yellow is very transparent. So this is a fix for transparent colors. Um, it doesn't work for uh, iridescence. you got to do black for iridescence. If you want good iridescent results, you right. want to put a dark color under them. Um, but for very light or thin colors where you're like, I don't feel like this is going to show over that. Now I can get the yellow to show out here where the colors are light, but down here in the dark green, not so much. So that's the trick. And this is another great way to be able to say, hey, we layered flowers, too. I'm going to just put some little petals here. It's fun to paint flowers in a loose and expressive manner like this. To me. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I'm so glad. I loved, uh, Bree, I really appreciate your words about that you're learning a lot and you're enjoying this class. I love being an art teacher. And, you know, I just happened to start that on YouTube when YouTube became like, I guess, the new media. <laughs> and... You know, that was sort of an interesting experience because, you know, we were just looking for a free place to be able to host art classes. And it has grown up around us. Into the big old beastie it is today. So anywhere the yellow might be over a dark color and it might struggle to show, you want to do the white first. Then once I have that in, I can come in and grab some yellow. And I'm going to just tint it with my, my orange a little bit. I'm going to bias it almost to a cad yellow deep, right? But it's still distinctly yellow. And I'm going to put some of these little marks. And you can see where the yellow is going over a light color, it's fine. It's just where I'm going to have to take it over a color that's a little dark for it.
And you can see already my white's drying, so I can come over. Yeah. And that just keeps those colors bright. I can always come back with like a little orange and shape any of these little flowers out in a way that I want. So it's not like I have to worry. The other trick I can do is I can add a little white to the yellow as well. But it just tends to cream it out more than I like. Mm. Wow. It's just more fall, more fall, more fall, isn't it? It really is. Get my don't pass out juice. <laughs> Feel a little blood sugar drop? Oh, yeah, like real hard. Oh, can, can I grab you something? I look, there isn't really anything here. Hmm. Man, I had an event at the retreat that was wild, but might have actually been me coming down with COVID. Let me see what I can do here. I'm just, sometimes I add a little, like, of the orange to it. You just want to place these around. You want them to be playful. can always come back with a yellow-orange to shade, which I really like. I hope the young person who is doing this painting as a gift is having a good time. And the reason I'm being indescript is because uh, I tend to protect uh, underage people online. Uh, just because, like, as a mom, that's what I would want done with my kids. I want them treated well online i have a, a some pretty strict rules on online content for my children like you know they have to tell all their friends like chats are not private mom might read them <laughs> that is really definitely caused the youngins to think a little bit about oh that's a good idea that's a very a very good idea um did i eat today i ate a bit I ate as much as I could this morning, and then... Um, not enough, which is why we're having not this. not enough, which has been my big challenge right now, is figuring out how to eat enough for everything. Now I'm going to try this, and we're going to come back and do the next step. So while she's doing that, I'll... You take a nibble. I got you muted. There you go. So I gave her some grapes and a little tiny mini eclair so that she could have some... Get some little, little, little bites in there between things, and that's something you guys got to take care of yourself. You know, listen to your body when you're hungry, eat. When you're tired, rest. You know, it's okay. And, uh, yeah, I am. Um, take care of yourselves. We, we love you guys, and we want you to be here for a long time in our painting family, friends, and to be able to do this. And, you know, so you got you to do some. got to take care of yourself along the way. Make sure it's all good. So, yeah. All right. Uh, other things we could do is oh, if if you wouldn't mind, there's a button that you can push. The thumbs up button. You can push that one, and then it makes a little thumbs up. It's a, it's a thing you can do while we're waiting here for it to dry. You, if you haven't subscribed, you could do that too. I mean. It's, no one's going to twist your arm, but if you want, you know, it would, you could do it. <laughs> what? You could, you could subscribe. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool if you wanted to. Like, I don't know. We don't do that a lot. John will tell you. I'm almost allergic to self-marketing. Yeah. I'm actually going to need to get better at it. It, it. I have this real, like when people overstate themselves or, or like are constantly, I, I don't know. I just have a, it's me. It's not them. It's me. 
But I do sometimes like, I, I just feel so weird when like you're 30 seconds in a video and someone's like, be sure and hit the subscribe button. I'm like, I don't know if I want to subscribe to you. I just met you. Right? I don't know where you want my subscription. So I, I want you guys to subscribe when you're like, I never want to miss a show. That's you like, if you're like there, I would love to have you. I'm going to take a little of my black and brown together on my angle brush. This is still a half inch angle. And I'm going to come through and touch some centers on some flowers. These are very small, right? These are not big, but it does seem to help you understand or, or, you know, go, some of these are leaves and some of these are flowers. And I, I very much like that. Not fun how that just goes flower. Yeah. If you like painting flowers, I did this uh, acrylic April one year, which is a 30 day painting challenge I do with my students. If you're new here and it's free to do, Totally free to do. And the topic was flowers one year. I think the book is about to come out or just came out. I do believe that is true. We are working on those currently. Yeah. I, it, it's either just about to be released or is released. Uh, I have a bunch of books on Amazon if you enjoy art books. Oh, yeah. We have done a few of those. Yeah. Those were fun. Those were fun. Pretty proud of them. Not lovely. So now we have some centers. Just cheering that all up, doesn't it? Yeah. And he's like, how are you, friend? I don't know what a man would teach, but then he left his lunch. What did he eat? Hmm. That sounds like a riddle. I, 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 I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not great at riddles. <laughs> no. No. I am, I am, I'm Luna, not my youngest, she is, is brilliant she and is, into riddles. I am not as good as riddles. Now we're going to yeah. take our burnt sienna and our yellow ochre together. We're going to kind of mix a little half tone here. And I'm using a number six Raphael sepia round. So if you had the art sharp on number four round, that's what you would use. And now I'm going to put my vision enhancers on. That I've had sitting on my head. And we're going to just go ahead and paint. Is this a new step here? This is not a new step. Okay. Well, you could make it a new step. I guess the flowers centers yeah, could be their own good, step. This looks like a good place to go a step in. Okay. You can. I'll step in here. It, because they're browns and ochres, they can be a little streaky, but don't worry. We've got several coats that we're doing, and we're going to just paint in this mixture of yellow ochre. And burn sienna as a base. Don't worry that it's streaky. It's going to get corrected as we go. We just need layer one. Ready, player, layer one. Another one of the many was better in a book than in a movie. So I'm happy to say if you were a fan of foundation, uh, Apple, um, Apple, uh, I don't know, whatever the streaming Apple services, it, it did foundation and it's really good. Oh, yeah. I'm not worried about the hand there because it's covered by hair. And again, what we're doing is we're just getting this layer down because until we get the layer down, it's going to be just really hard for it to register as skin tones. Don't stress on the streaky. I love painting the little claws in because <laughs> they look like little claws for a second. <laughs> it's just kind of awesome. Now I'm going to take my brown and black over here. Brown and black. And grab a little bit of white. 
And you're going to see it's making kind of like a little converse sneaker color. And it can be different than our skin tone. So I'm going to just paint around this very carefully. This part here, what we're doing is an underpainting. It is the first layer of paint. So what happens here is there's no swing person and then all of a sudden there is a lot of swing person. <clears throat> this is why the traceable isn't cheating because right. you have to paint all the stuff out anyways. Yep, you just, I mean, it's a lot of work. It, it just is. And so you're still learning it. That's why I never worry about my students learning to draw. You guys actually do pick it up over time fairly well. I'm going to grab a little more black and I will come here and do the back of the wood. These are just the values, the lights and darks of the main subject. And if we can get these correct, I'm just going, I haven't rinsed out my brush. I'm just going into the black to get the value. You grab a little more brown in the next one. We'll use some techniques to create some fun wood here in a minute. We just got to get a layer painted on. You guys have got this. Ooh, someone's in Scotland. I'm jealous. Hmm. That sounds lovely. Though I really like being in Ann Arbor. That has also been lovely. You know what I missed? I, I forgot about, my under the hair skin. I think there's about five and a half million people in Scotland. Yeah. There's, there's a couple. And you guys have these really cute uh, pigs there that are wild that I'm sure if you're from there, you know it, but other people might not know it. They're, they're fuzzy pigs. <laughs> they got curly hair and uh, they're really important to the forestry service. I know about that because I watched a bunch of rewilding projects and they're using the pigs to rewild. We would totally be pig owners if we were over there. Yes, it was our plan if we had gotten to Ireland to do a permaculture mm -hmm. farm and uh, we were going to have the pigs. This is what we were going to do. Now, That's let's right. do our red dress and our red dress is going to be a little bit of our red paint and we're going to start with just a little bit of black there. So it's kind of a dark rust color. See, it's almost a brown. Uh, and I have this as a video, but if you didn't know that, uh, Cad Red and Mars Black make some pretty good browns. Yeah. So this particular one is just a little more. Into the red than the brown. And again, this may be a little streaky and that's all right at this stage. I will be putting hair back in. I just want to cover my canvas. I can press down harder on my brush if I want to cover more area. How is everybody doing? Really good. Oh, excellent. I'm so glad to have you guys here. I'm so grateful for you. I hope you are all doing wonderful. Um, feel free. We are, uh, it, are you having the team check to see if anybody has submitted for the post live show? I have. I just have not been equipped the, the, to, to be able to show those. So oh, okay. I'm getting, getting, getting back into the groove of it, but I think that we'll be there shortly. Like shortly. Probably, within the, probably the next step, next right. episode. So a thing that we've been trying to do, and we may episode. not be able to do today because of technical challenges, but we'll try to get back into. So I'm going to tell you about is if you, from, from the lessons, if you have a painting you want to share with me and you'd like to see on one of our live shows at the end, you submit that to support at theartsherpa.com, a photograph and your name and your painting. And uh, we're trying to show those more and more at the end of the show. So you guys can, without being on Facebook, 
see the amazing work that's being done. Mm. Right. Uh, but John's got to get back in the swing of things of being able to get them up on the show. Yes. So feel free to submit though. And we'll try to, you don't want to miss the next show this week on Thursday. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss a short. You don't want to miss a, a live show. I am bringing it. The great thing about the platform becoming so wildly competitive is I got to bring better and better paintings to you. And who doesn't love that? Everybody. Everybody loves that. There's some good stuff coming. I got a great landscape coming. We've got this wonderful uh, leaf on a rainy window and we're really going to exaggerate those water drops. So it's going to be gorgeous. Look at this, see? So we're just blocking in. That's what this is, is blocking in. Oh, Ashley, it's so good to see you and love to you too. And, uh, so someone, there's a caption that won't disappear for somebody. Um, Google has some instruction on that, like on how to get rid of captions and stuff, um, for YouTube. I'm going to come here and I'm going to start with just black on the hair, even though it's just brown hair. I just want some nice dark. space to begin with and then we'll we'll build it up into browns and everything. I love hair. It's kind of keeping that on the toe of my brush. When we paint hair, we paint the form first. And then we get come in and get the details, but you don't have to worry about painting every individual hair. There's some techniques where you almost do that, but those are very involved, generally done by oil artist techniques. You can do it in acrylic. And I'm going to bring my hair just a little bit over the dress because I want her hair to be in motion. I want it to be active. And while we are in Ann Arbor and we're super excited to be here, I don't want you guys to think that we have let go of our Irish dream at all. No. It's just no, not at all. been uh, transformed a little bit. And like we have, so we were so far into it. We had tickets, we had Airbnbs booked out. We were like looking Actually, for, we had signed up we, on a rental. Yeah. We had deposits on a, on our, on our deposit and first month was paid. On our rental, like we were really expecting was, to go. Yeah, I was nearly Tickets. purchasing a car. We'd already paid for our flights. We had all of the stuff ready to go. It was, we were. It was a shock to have that change. It was just an unexpected delay and delay. But look and at delay. us. Look how resilient we are. Even on this show, we're like, eh, camera's down. John is actually pretty calm considering how stressful that is. It was a little stressful, a little more than I expected there, but. But you handled it, babe. We'll be okay trying to make sure we get nice lovely flowing hair and I will be bringing this into you know those wonderful browns but I just want to make sure that there we go now to do the next part this crazy streaky girl's got to be dried right um, so using heavy bodied acrylics, are you supposed to be able to see the texture of the brush strokes? Yeah. So heavy bodied acrylics and the stiff brushes that are designed for them do tend to show the thickness of the paint, the brush stroke, the whole point of that paint is like, if I put out a thick application, you can see the paint, right? Yeah. Um, fluid acrylic, which is this right here or soft bodied, it is a self leveling paint. So it tends to be smooth, more like what you think of as decorative painting or one stroke painting because you want that to be a very smooth application and acrylic comes in like airbrush it comes in inks it comes in thick body paints it comes in 
uh, thin body paints it has a variety of behaviors. It even yeah. comes out as a gouache. So they have a lot of acrylic presented a lot of different ways, which they all work together, interestingly enough. So you never have to worry about that. Can I, can I interact with those different uh, bodies of paint? You absolutely can. You know, matte, gloss, it all interacts. So yeah, it, there you go. All the different kinds of paints that you can play with. Doo -doo, don't want to sit on that thing. Um, doop. All sorts of camera parts and bits and pieces. They're, oh no, floating around here. You can hear them all bangy, bangy, bangy as I move them around. <sighs> but at least we get to do it. So I'm very excited that I'm here and we're, we're, we're playing with this stuff and doing this kind of fun creation with you guys. It's um, some of the best, best, best times of our life have been doing this show with you guys. So. Thank you for letting us be part of your life and being part of ours. And yeah, I just am super grateful. Now this is interesting. People are talking about the tutorial time. Um, we do our tutorials uh, at one uh, Eastern. Hmm. Um, and that's really about a couple of things. One, because we have kids in school. And two, um, because I am a better teacher earlier in the day. <laughs> I think at night I'm a, I'm a sleepy, sleepy person. I'm a sleepy girl. So uh, I do them sometimes, like we do them sometimes late. Um, we used to do them more at night. And then also because everybody who was initially on YouTube, like John and I were really the first of the lives out here doing the two-person art format. And as more of our friends came on and were doing that as well, going live and uh, doing doing that, Everybody kind of had a different time, and we just tried not to step on each other's toes. Remember that? Yeah. Um, and now there's so many people that's not even possible anymore. Like, I think there was a time when we were like, if somebody painted a subject, other people didn't even paint that subject. Right. Right? Now it's like, there's just too many artists out there and too many people doing too much stuff. And, so you, and you want all your friends to thrive. And so now you're like, just go live when you can go live and paint what you can paint and do what you can do. Because it's crazy out here, guys. It you got to be, you got to be okay. So it's really changed over the 10 years. Like there was a time where I was the person who painted people under an umbrella. Right. Right. I painted girls walking away under the umbrella and I painted a lot of that. And then it would be weird if somebody else painted that. And then people would be like, oh, you're, you're painting that. And, and, and we realized like, well, my under the umbrella girl is completely different. It's not like we're copying each other. It's just, just the same subject. The, the, <laughs> well, and then we had references and then it, like somebody would figure out what your reference photo re reference website was and they would license the same photo as you. There wasn't anything you could do about it. And there just isn't. And, and, and it's good for the photographer. They're getting paid by multiple people. It's good yep. for everybody. And so it's really changed over time. And I have just tended to stay 1 p.m. Eastern time Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays. That's what we try to do, yeah. Is what we try to do. And then we try to have other stuff fit in around that. If there's going to be like a watercolor class or another class, then we try to fill it in while yeah. we can. But it's it's definitely changed. It's like definitely, definitely a different space than it used to be. But I weirdly am the same. So I'm just going to keep trucking on. Yeah. All right. So now, new step. New step. Skin tones. Woohoo. So I'm actually going to just come in with some more yellow ochre into my burnt sienna. I'm still on my number six sepia round. And I'm going to come to my hand and just kind of start this. This is a much more ochre mix than the original. I'm not, I'm going to take that down about halfway the arm, not the whole arm. This is just the start. And right here, I'm going to add just a little bit more of that. This is just the yellow ochre. And the burnt sienna. Still pretty dark color. But you can see that starts to smooth out the application of the paint, right? Maybe all the way down there. Just kind of fill that in. Just running that in. This is going to go fast now. 
Um, not that I'm going to speed up my painting, it just starts to come together quickly at this stage. Once I have that, I might go a little more yellow ochre and I might get a little white involved. Come on the inside of the hand. Because the hand would be in sunlight. I'm going to come very carefully along the arm. And you're going to see that we're getting a highlight right there, aren't we? Little highlight at the top half of the arm. It's exaggerated at this stage, but that's what we're doing. Maybe a little less there and a little heavier here. A little bit at the front of the shin and coming back on the leg. And a little bit on the inside of that calf. I'm going to rinse out. Kind of mix a little half tone between those two, which means I'm bringing the color ahead from earlier up into where I have the white. Right, because we're wanting to make a, you know, another kind of like slightly darker blend down. What you're doing is you're trying to create highlights here and through here and shadows down further. Maybe a little bit of light might come through on the shoulder here. And then through her arm. Now I can grab a little bit of black and I can mix it into my, my paint color here. Come under the arm there and under the arm there. So we're just creating values. Let's put a little bit of that dark color right there at the bend of the wrist. And maybe at the back of the hand, along the dress line. And then along the back end of this arm. What happened up there? How are their adventures happening? Well, there was a, a knock at the door. Mm -hmm. So I went to go to find out because I didn't want them to persist and ring the doorbell. And uh, opened the door. No one was there. And as I was closing it, a big wasp just goes whack and bounces off the window as I as the, just as the oh, door closed. Oh, is it starting to recognize us or something? No, I, no, no. You know I, they hit doorbells. Wasps do that on purpose. <laughs> they have a whole bunch of video of it on people's ring cams. They ring the doorbell. I stay up late at night. They ring the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's I'm just believing the video with my own eyes. It comes in and it stings. It's like sting, 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 sting. It's going ring, 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 ring. And they will. They'll get in the house. They're, it's terrifying. Well, yeah, that was, I don't, I don't know that that was a foot. I just thought there was a giant wasp that almost got in the house. And I was like, not having that. No, no, no. I don't want that. That would be so way I'm, too much adventure. I'm adding yellow ochre and a lot more white. A lot more. And we're going to come here and really try to add some little sun-kissed highlights that are bright. I'm bringing this down away from the brown just so I can really see the color and know that I've got what I need. Right there on the arm. Another highlight. All right, so there we go. That's our little skin tones, okay? Yeah. So now we've got someone who is like swinging in the sun, which I like. Let's call it a new step and we're gonna paint the feet, which if we remember was burnt sienna, Mars black and white. 
I am mixing a darker, darker value of that. I'm going to come to the back of this shoe. And interestingly enough, a little bit of the front of that one. And let's shade the toe a little bit. Now, I'm not, not ignoring you guys in chat right now, but my phone just died. <laughs> So I can't see the chat anymore. So it's going to, it's down to the mods now. Your chat I'm coming disappeared in there? on the inside there. Your phone died? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, let me get the fixed. That's okay. All right. So what we're getting is we're getting some shading on the shoes where we need a little shading on the shoes. Then I can always come in. I'm going to get a brighter highlight. Let's get some high highlights. Like this is our light, light color in the shoe. Coming around the little bands on that converse, right? A little bit right there. A little bit right there, a little bit there, definitely a little bit of that highlight there. And then I can kind of get into that middle range. And really finish out. Might blend that out a little bit. Wipe out. Wipe out. If I need more brown in that mix, I can get it easily. A little bit of highlight there. Even more highlight, maybe. Bit in the shoe there, just kind of just showing the, the different little I grabbed a little bit of a previous color. I'm just making sure that we've got nice dimensionality on our little shoes. More into the darker range. little bit behind there. <coughs> kind of coloring in sometimes. We're just wanting to make sure that our little shoes are looking like shoes. Now my last one is I'm mixing a very, very light value with my white, my brush. I still think that that wasp rang the doorbell. Just letting you know. Well, it didn't ring our doorbell. Well, like it was trying to get in. It That's who knocked. Think, see, think the wasp knocked? I think the wasp knocked, yes. Could be. I'm only seen, I've seen a bunch of wasps do it. Or somebody who annoyed the wasp knocked and the wasp was like, you live inside here. And I now think, we're in trouble. I think, I think probably what happened was somebody opened the screen door and knocked and saw the wasps and ran away. When are they going to clear those up? Cause I don't think they are. I think that it's a me thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give up on the landlord doing that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's a they problem. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we should, because they the, the wasps like remember faces. They have yeah. a photographic memory for faces. I'm going to do a little bit of research. I think that there's some... I'm just saying, once you start a wasp war, you have to finish it. That's, that's why I'm going to do the research. I don't want to just go out there with a paintball gun and go, I got this. And I'm gonna, mm -mm. I'm I'm gonna do some some research. I think that there's a little device you can put into the hive entrance. Where we All right, let's back away and see what the overall effect of our shoe is. Ah, good, we've got shoes. That's wonderful. Okay, now let's do dress. We'll call that a new step. All right. We're gonna do dress, and I've got my orange here already, so I've got ranges. 
right? One of the nice things is, is by having all these colors here already, I can absolutely do that. I'm going to grab a little bit of the blue again. So the deepest red will be at the back, right, where it's blocked from the light coming in. That's why it's like that. That's, that's why it's like that. I think I want my face camera here again someday. Yeah. Yeah. We'll move it back here next time. Okay. If we, if we well, first we got to get enough cameras to go around. Yeah, it's, we, I, like I pulled this one in. It's a bigger mich It's a bigger camera. It is I, a big camera. It's one of those like hand, handheld, like old school. The electronic news gathering camera. Yeah, it looks like a news camera. That's what it is. It's an ENG camera. That's what it was originally for, so what it was designed for. Just trying to focus these dark values. It's okay if I paint out a little bit of hair, right? We don't mind that. Just want to make sure that we've got the dark values kind of in. And then as I'm coming forward, I'm going to do little touches because there's also some pattern on the dress. So not only do we have highlights on the dress and the fabric folds and all of that, but there's patterns as well. So I've got to paint both the dress and the patterns. And I like that actually, that's fun for me. This kind of work is super, super fun for me. And I hope it's fun for you guys. So it's a very irregular pattern. And rinse out a bit. And while this is having a, um, while this is having a little bit of a, ta I'm, let, I'm not letting it dry, I'm just like letting it get tacky. I'm going to come back over to the wood color. I mean the shoe color, which is also the wood color. Maybe put a little more brown in it. And dry brush back a little bit of a light wood texture. Right. Let's get a little bit of black and brown together again. Quite dark. I can always come back with my dark brown wood as well and exaggerate that wood. So I'm doing yeah. little wood like marks. She would have splinters. <laughs> That's like some of the fun of like trying to figure that out is like she would have splinters. I can always just define edges to to improve the feeling you want the top of the swing to be lighter than the back of the swing. That's the big thing guys for, for it to feel like it's got dimensionality. Let's call this a step and then we can continue on. I'm going to make a little bit of oranges into my red. Or we'll start touching in some highlights. This is going to be like the red, the cad red with a little bit of cad yellow. And she will be fully as bright as the flowers around her. Now, something I'm going to do is I'm going to keep a shadow here. I'm going to keep a shadow here. I'm not going to let it get bright here. They'll definitely be shading back here. The outer edges can get brighter. So as I'm lifting up the color, you'll notice that I keep a certain rich darkness to things.
in certain areas. A little brighter on that outside edge. There's maybe some stuff here. Darker oranges back there. I can even come into my black and red, make some very dark, dark shades. This is like fabric that's in deep shadow. And where we're going to see some shaping on the dress. Can come back with some pure cad red. And I will wait to do the white spots until all of this is dry and really mostly just because um, I want them to really show. Right, so what you're doing here is just making sure that your dress is got little highlights there. I, I love the one up here, so that's one that's very important to me to get. Okay, that there might be a few touches in, in this back area. A little more red, kind of trim that highlight out. Let's come back and do the hair. You guys ready for some hair? I think we are ready for some hair. So we're just going to take a new step here. Yeah, let's let's do a new step here. And we're going to take a little bit of our black and brown. And this time it's going to be a kind of a rich chocolate or a coffee bean. And we're going to Mm, you know what I got to do What's that? before I can do this before I can do any of that because my What's hair that? goes over. I have to go up my line. I have to. Where's my T-square? All right. All right. When I don't have a T-square, what do I have? I have tape. And that's what I'm grabbing right now is some low tech tape. T-square is a ruler that will help me keep a straight line. The tape will help me keep a straight line. So I'm going to pull out a couple pieces and dry this. And then I will just use my tape. You can reuse this tape a bunch of times, so don't stress out that you've wasted your tape. You haven't wasted your tape. But let's dry this thoroughly so we can tape it, and then we'll get the hair in. Because if we do that, then that'll keep us from having boo-boos. And we're doing pretty good so far, so like, we kind of want to bring this all the way home perfectly. Got to thoroughly, thoroughly dry it, and that's what you just got to take the little extra time to to do there. That way, you get that. And if you don't, if you don't make sure that your paint's really, really dry when you put paint over it or tape over it, it can lift. So she's actually making sure also that um, we don't have any accidental uh, lifting. So thoroughly dry that out. I think everything is working again, so. So will this be a new step? Um, This is still the hair step. Still the hair step. Yeah, we just have to do this to do the hair. No problem. Just want to make sure. I'm... No, no, I'm with you. I just want to make sure I'm lined up on my tracing lines because that's what makes everything line up with the hands the way they're supposed to. I'm going to burnish it down with my fingers like you do. I just want to make sure that I've got this set where it will go through her hand correctly. That is the challenge. All right. Why the tape? I want a crisp line and I don't have as steady of a hand as I could. I'm going to grab some brown and black. Um, you know, there was no danger of me being a surgeon, but Now at the arm, you don't want to take the line up the arm, right? Because it would be hidden behind. So be careful you don't paint this over her arm. Now 
And this is a rope, so there is some forgiveness here where we're doing the rope painting. Behind the hand and out the claw. So where that's open, you don't want to go in there. And this does really help me because I can get off yeah. offline pretty easily. I always admire artists that have complete and utterly developed hand control. Now, I'm going to go ahead and remove it because I don't mind if the line is rough. Um, if you ever need this line to be completely crisp, you have to burnish it down harder and you have to dry it before you remove it. Right. But this is just a guide so that, like I have to have just enough rope here to be able to function and I just didn't. So I'm back to my hair. Because I can paint the rope around it once that's there, but that just has to be there at this stage. All right, so we're back to the black and brown. Oops. There we go. That's working. So quite dark. Sometimes I, when I do repaints, I get a little wild with the hair. And she should have wild hair. Your hair gets a little wild on a swing. It should, yeah. It should be in motion, right? So that's kind of what we're trying to really, really be able to process and and show and paint. Now, when I want to lighten it, I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and my red. I'm going to make an orange. I'm mixing it in with my burnt sienna. I'm going to just start adding some little highlights in the hair. This is where maybe, you know, um, you can get pure burnt sienna in the hair as well, mix it in. This is just about the natural sort of multi-tonal dimensionality that hair tends to have. And I'm going around and I'm getting into my brown and black and but what I'm not doing is painting away the dark values of my hair. little brown. Okay, let's see where we're at overhead. I'm going to take a little bit of black. I just want to make sure that that's not a chunk that just drops to an end there. I want to have little tapered ends, if that makes sense. Mm
Just playful. Just fun. Okay, now our rope is an interesting creature in that it's definitely got a distinctive highlight on it. I'm now going to kind of paint this out thoughtfully. Still on this round brush because it's giving me control. Control. And you can see how that tape really helped me hold this line yeah. for later. It really does. Uh, yeah, it makes a huge, huge difference. Now I'm going to get into my kind of shoe highlight color. I'm going to paint a twist or a braid going down. I can use my finger, my pinky finger, to steady my hand if I need to. Her arms, you know, rest on the rope on that side. I am not a swing architect. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks cool. You know? I like swinging, though. Always have. One of my meditations is to visualize myself swinging until I can feel the motion of the swing. Mm. One of my favorite to do. That's interesting. Painting in a nice little twist on the rope. Just that sense that there's a twisted rope. And now, take a little bit of my white. I don't mind if it picks up a little blue or brown, that's okay. Maybe more in shadow, so I add a little more brown to that white, so it's just not as bright mm -hmm. in the back end. And then, I cannot believe we got through this crazy day. It has been. What? Has it? Seriously, for the technical challenges and the... Ah, oh, but don't miss next week because we'll have these solved. Thank you so much for the generosity that you guys have shared on helping us because we're going to have to go buy a bunch of equipment. Um, when we come up this Thursday, don't miss this Thursday. It's going to be great. Even when classes are maybe above your current painting level. First, you got to know I have 2,500 full art lesson videos on YouTube. Yes. So I have many, many, many total beginner, intermediate beginner, and advanced beginner courses. The reason they're all considered beginner, even though maybe in some other places they might be called advanced, is because I'm still explaining every color mix and every step. Yeah. And, and truly advanced stuff is, you, they just, they talk to you more about thought process than specific technique in the moment, more about artistic vision and voice and things like that. So um, I, I try to be really specific about how I label uh, my lessons. So one, you guys can calculate what you're getting into. And two, that maybe you're brave enough to reach above your current level a little bit and stretch. 
right? And one of the things you'll know is that with the exception of the Red Fox Girl, which got away from me, <laughs> yeah. there was some genuine demo that eventually happened there. Um, all of these lessons are focused at beginners and are broken down into steps and are broken down into that type of explanation so that you can paint along, which is what will always keep it at a beginner because I think a beginner's journey is from no idea where to put the paint on the brush and how to get it to the canvas, right? And I have classes from that level. If you're at that place, you do the beginner acrylic painting course um, all the way up to you're not quite painting your own original work yet and you need some really challenging classes that are deeper dives into techniques so that you can make that last little hop to your own independent space. That's this channel is about that whole beginner journey from first painting to the last painting that you need guidance on <laughs> so that you can go be free <laughs> and paint your own stuff. And that is the goal, though apparently I've had people hang with me for 10 years, so I might be entertaining and people might hang in. My head is cut off. Well, yeah, well, it's because I had to zoom in a little bit. No, I just, it's very flat. It's all right. Just to the flat top. Flat head, flat head, lovely, lovely flat. Sorry. <laughs> I'm really concerned about this wasp now. Well, we'll go check it out. All right, so we can't show y'all's work this live. We're gonna try for it next live. So if you had, if you did this painting and you want to show me your version of this painting, you write support at theartsherpa.com. Give us the name that you want to be called um, in the show, and uh, well, I mean, obviously it has to be appropriate for video, but the name you want to be called in the show a good picture of your painting, and at the end of a live class, we like to showcase you guys now. We're gonna be doing that for about the next year, I think, just showcasing you guys, because I always tell John, John always says this to everybody, um, it's the reason why we don't have professional artists just throwing their artwork up in the Art Trip Official, is it isn't about them. Sure. It's about you and your experience and this beginning journey, which is important and sacred and amazing. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't see the chat for the last bit, but I want you guys to know that I so appreciate you coming. Everybody's here. Oh, Bree and Jan and oh, Vera and, and Nikisha and, and Susie and Shirley and Virgo and Angela. And I could just go all the way up. It's like it's, you know, it's romp room all down the, the midnight club. Michelle. The midnight club is the midnight coming. Club. So, yeah. Ding, ding, or anybody, TJ or Beth or Marie. I would have to, I'd have to keep okay. scrolling. All right. So, um... I miss you guys, and I'm so glad to be back. We're getting back to old school Art Sherpa, uh, and we're adding new stuff. We're gonna, you're gonna have your three lessons a week, and then we're gonna, then you're gonna have shorts on top of that. Those are one. What's the next one that's gonna drop? How to draw fall leaf? Uh, I think so. If you ever want to know how to draw fall leaf in one minute, I'll show you how. You know, so those will be going up every day, every day that we can put them up. And then I'm gonna try to add some kid content in, and some more watercolor content, and maybe some oil pastel. So you might be very busy, like yeah. frugal crafter busy over here on my channel. Busy, busy. If that sounds cool to you, it is a good idea to hit subscribe. And I, I am, I feel that this is my thing. I feel I'm one of the best teachers on YouTube. I think you are. I, I really do. I feel like I've done it for a while and I've had to teach remotely for a while and I make a point of teaching in person. So I keep my skills sharp. Um, and you know, when we do retreats and stuff like that, that helps me stay really sharp and I'm I'm in my groups. I'm active here. I'm <laughs> I have a lot of subscribers, but the goal wasn't to be famous. The goal was to create the best art education for beginners out there, bar none. Yeah. So that's my drive. That's my motivator. Anything you saw here on the show today should be available for sale in our art store. If anything is ever sold out, check back in a day, because what happens is we can sell out the warehouses. Yeah, and they so we're capped. <laughs> yeah, so, so every day they'll sometimes they'll trickle out the you know, yeah the, the stuff. So we if, don't if it's like like if there's not a lot. So if you're having trouble finding Quinn Magenta, come to our art store. We have Quinn Magenta in stock. Yeah, um, at, from from many different makers. Um, the twelve sixty four pads are there, uh, and I love those twelve sixty four pads. That twelve sixty four multimedia pad. If you have to paint on paper, that's a great paper. The Fabriano um, watercolor blocks, that's a great paper. We've got those there. We've got the wet palettes, the Serral paper, just stuff. If I use it, it's in my store. Yeah. And that's where my brush is going to be sold soon. So, you know, we're to check it out. And it's $10 flat rate shipping now. So maybe not great for one brush, but brilliant if you're going to grab a few things. Yes. Yes. It's 
and that's, it's 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 timelier than when John and I do it, but it's not like Amazon fast. I don't know. We're, it's getting better. It's getting better and better and better and better. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to manage expectations. <laughs> <laughs> and um like we had somebody uh, buy a kit like a watercolor kit by accident sometimes that'll happen but listen we have good customer service uh, you write support at the com. that's our support line we will do anything we can to help you and if somehow you can't get a hold of us there it's i'm pretty reachable online yeah so that is us and i hope you're great and be good to yourselves be good to each other and i want to see you at an easel really soon Bye bye